Good evening, everyone. On behalf of President Kahn, our board of directors, the university faculty, staff, and administration, we be the first to welcome you from the stage and congratulate you on this wonderful uh, weekend that we're experiencing together. There are a lot of outstanding events that happen on a campus like ours. Beginning of a semester is always exciting. Fall and spring break are great as well. But there's something about a commencement weekend, and we're so pleased that all of our guests have joined us tonight, and to all our graduates, both on the bachelor's degree and the master's degrees, congratulations on this outstanding achievement, and welcome to Lee University's Summer Commissioning Service for 2013. Will you please remain standing as coming to prior invocation is a Bachelor of Science and Pastoral Ministry graduate, Lorian George, leads us in the invocation. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, we thank you for who you are today, that from the turmoil of moving in freshman year till this weekend of celebration, you are exactly the same. We thank you for this graduation weekend, that you brought us safe this far, where our strength when we could not keep going, and that you love to rejoice and celebrate with us. We thank you for our families and our friends who have been so supportive for the body of Christ you put around us. We thank you for the opportunity to be part of a Christian university where the prayer is for Christ to be king and where the faculty, staff, and students all push each other closer to the Lord. We ask for safe travels the rest of this weekend, for beautiful pictures and memories, and for a fun time of reflection and dreaming of what is ahead. We thank you for your blessings, and we ask that as we graduate into this next phase of life, you would draw us more into a loving relationship with you and loving others. Let your presence come to rest and celebrate with us today. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Remain standing with me and let's sing together about the greatness of God. You can find the text, The Greatest I Faithfulness, on the page just past our programs for tonight and tomorrow.
be seated. Well, it's great to see everyone here this evening on this uh, wonderful occasion as we join together to uh, reflect with our graduates at the time of their commencement. We really look forward to this commissioning event uh, at every commencement time, and I'm so glad you're here to be with us. It's uh, kind of a toasty summer late afternoon, and not the best weather for wearing a black robe, uh, but still here we are. And for those of you who uh, are here to join your family member or your friend, I know that it means a lot to them as it means a lot to us uh, that you're here. Especially want to offer appreciation to members of the faculty who uh, have turned out in force on this summer evening to uh, join us in this commencement. This is something that I personally never take for granted and I hope you as graduates understand uh, what a great gesture and signal it is of their, uh, not just their interest in you, but their sense of kinship with you. Uh, those of you who are graduating, some member of this faculty or several members of this faculty uh, know you, care about you, have invested in you. And to my colleagues on the faculty, thank you so much for taking the time out this evening. Now, tonight's a night for students. I'm not going to have much to say, and uh, no, uh, no adult is going to come to the microphone and, and say wise things. We will have an adult who will say wise things tomorrow, but uh, <laughs> that's when we're going to send you forth. But we're not going to send you forth just yet. We're going to take time, and students will reflect on what it has been like to be at Lee in these last two or three or four, or Lord knows, five or six years. <laughs> this is a night for students, and you're going to hear from seven students now, and let me introduce all of them. The six student speakers have been asked to give you just a snapshot of their lives. I have told them Please uh, don't be reluctant to be personal and autobiographical. That's really what we want. We want to hear your side of the story. We want to see the facet of Lee that you experienced it as a student here. Some of these students are master's degree graduates. No EDS graduates in, the, in this crowd, I don't think, in the, in the speaking lineup. Um, some are undergraduates and some are both. So here's, here's what we have to look forward to. Beginning will, will be Rochelle Mayberry. Rochelle is from Cincinnati, Ohio, and she is graduating with a Master of Science in College Student Development. Following will come Eric Minter. Eric is from Dalton, Georgia, also a master's degree in MA in education. <clears throat> After that, we'll hear from Priscilla Tran, Priscilla is from Fairhope, Alabama, and she is graduating with a Bachelor of Science in Inter Interdisciplinary Studies. After those three speakers, we're going to enjoy music from Kristen Hollowood. Kristen is graduating with a BA in vocal music. She's also from Cincinnati. Then three more speakers. First, we'll hear from Gary Pelche. He's graduating with a master's degree in MA in teaching, and he's from Ponchatoula, Louisiana. And then Cedrica Pippins, who is from Rome, Georgia, graduating with a BS in health science. And finally, wrapping up, Taylor Trotter. Taylor is from Woodstock, Georgia. He's graduating with a BA in biblical and theological studies. This next few minutes is one of the parts of the school year that I most love. I'm eager to hear your stories, guys. So, Rochelle, get us started. Thank you so much, Dr. Khan, for giving us the opportunity to share at this occasion. First generation college student a phrase that I never really understood until learning about it in one of my college student development courses. That was when I learned that apparently I was one. 
The beauty of this realization was that it only deepened my gratitude for my parents. They were the ones who first taught me what service and sacrifice really look like. So before I tell you stories of some other family I've experienced here at Lee, I wanted to take this opportunity to thank my mom and dad, who have supported me and believed in me, making these stories possible. From the beginning here at Summer Honors for me, all the way through my graduate studies, my Lee experience has been defined by service. Involvement with organizations like the Student Leadership Council and the Service Council have led me off campus to places where God has taught me some remarkable lessons. One night, on a very cold urban outreach trip in Atlanta with a group of Lee students, I got to hold a beautiful, blonde, blue-eyed boy named Orion. He was nine months old, and I had joined his parents outside as they waited for a bowl of soup and a piece of bread. Orion and his family were homeless. After Orion woke up from his nap, he would not stop crying from hunger. Because they had come late, it was going to be at least an hour-long wait with no guarantees of food left over at the end. It became clear that this family was simply living each day as it came. No real ability to dream for the future, only time to cautiously navigate the present. As I held little Orion in my arms, trying my best to keep his mind off of his empty stomach, his parents were desperately racking their brains for a way to escape the snow that night. My heart was breaking. This perfect picture of innocence, sitting here in my lap, was starving, both for food and attention, while his parents just sought to survive the night. Then something so simple, yet so beautiful, happened. A worn, elderly man, with a decayed grin, walked over and quietly offered his soup and bread, saying, here, take mine for the baby. I found out that they called this man Grandpa, as mom cooled the soup for the baby, grandpa took Orion in his arms. He snuggled with him, he threw him in the air, he made him laugh. Luckily, we had more than enough food to serve that night, but grandpa chose to wait again at the very end of the line in spite of his own hunger. It might be a simple story to you, but grandpa's example became one of profound impact for me. He reminded me of the great potential for beauty within all of us no matter our circumstances. They all called him Grandpa, meaning he made people feel like family. He reminded me that night that we're all called to be family to those around us. Throughout my years here at Lee, many others have helped to deepen my understanding of this word, family. Through a student organization called Crossover, I was able to build bonds with many that society tends to overlook. I've also lost many of my adopted family in East Cleveland finding myself sitting with fellow students to plan memorial services for those who had no other family but us. The stories of Walter and Patty, Betty and Effie live on through the immense love that they offered to students like me. In April of 2011, I saw what it meant for an entire community to operate as family. After the tornado swept through this city, many of you spent hours in the yards of strangers, helping them get back to a new normal. Many of you I found in our very hot warehouse down the road sorting donations that helped hundreds of people get back on their feet. It looked, back to, it looked to me like one huge family. Faculty and staff, many of you have welcomed me into your homes, allowing me to become part of your families. You've adopted me as a daughter, a sister, and a friend, showing me a love and a grace that has changed me. Specifically, I want to thank the Hayes family, Moyan family, and Sargent family, who have each taught me so much about what it means to share their lives with students. They've provided me with a home away from home more times than I can count, and I'm so thankful. Now I am honored that I'm able to serve on staff here at Lee and to welcome new students into this Lee community to what has truly become my family, to share it with them. However, many of you are leaving to go around the world and my prayer for you is that wherever you go, you find family. But not only that you find it, that you choose to become family to those around you, especially those who might need some soup and bread, a helping hand, a home away from home, or just someone to believe in them. Thank you.
My wife keeps telling me what an honor it is to speak to you folks tonight. I keep telling her how hard it must have been to find people to do this. Uh, but whoever is right, I'd like to thank the school for the opportunity to share a little bit. I realize that in a couple of days, most of you aren't going to remember anything that I have said, and I'm okay with that. I used to want everybody to hear and remember everything I had to say, but um, now I would be satisfied if I could get my sons to listen to me. <laughs> so I'm going to take advantage of this setting to talk a little bit to my boys. It'll help me calm down a little bit. Samuel, David, here is the most important thing you're going to hear uh, all of tonight, probably the rest of your life. This is the most important thing you're going to hear. Dr. Riggins told me he would pay for your education if you scored high enough on the ACT. <laughs> Boys, life is hard, and regardless of how it looks on the outside, it's hard for everybody. But things have been made easier for your mom and me because of those who cleared the way before. Our grandparents on both sides lived through two world wars, a Great Depression, Korea, Vietnam, a host of other crises. None of them went to college. They didn't have that opportunity, but a whole bunch of their kids and their grandkids and their great-grandkids did. And I'm standing up here tonight because when times were tough, there was a man named Will Mentor, who you never knew, a woman named Bernice Thomason, who you never knew, but when times were tough, they turned to the Lord. You're sitting in a room full of highly educated people tonight. Every one of these people have folks like that in their stories, grand, like your great-grandparents, heroes of the faith who set their whole families on a different course. They lived through hard times and determined that with the help of the Lord, their kids would have a better chance at life. A lot of people call themselves Christians, but those who deserve to bear his name to me are those like your great-grandparents, waymakers, who cleared the path and made life easier for others. I've tried to minimize the impact of pursuing this degree on our family, but boys, you need to know it's a big, tough world out there and school is important. You come from people that love to go to school. Your mamma worked in schools. Your grandmother taught her whole life. Back when she was 80, she went and got recertified to teach because I guess you never know if you're going to need to work again. <laughs> your grandfather started teaching high school before he, started, before he eventually became a preacher. Your Aunt Karen was a music professor. Your Aunt Teresa is a social worker. Your Uncle Keith was an elementary teacher. Your mom has taught more than 20 years. And because I wasn't busy enough pastoring churches, I started teaching too. <laughs> On both sides of the family, you have pastors and teachers and doctors and nurses and lawyers, professors, principals, professional people. All work is important and valuable. But we've chosen professions, and you will too, boys. You hear me? <laughs> God's hand is on you to do good in this world, and he'll help you make life easier for others by your choice to better yourself with an education from this university. And if you don't remember anything else tonight, remember this. Dr. Riggins told me he'd pay <laughs> for your education if you scored high enough on the ACT. Thank you. Good evening. Um, thank you so much for this opportunity to speak. I can't believe it's here. Um, when they asked me to speak, they asked me to tell my story, be personal, use my own voice. Um, well, hi, y'all. <laughs> One thing I quickly acquired at Lee was a nice southern drawl. Where else are you going to find a country Asian with blonde hair? So. More than that, though, um, I found people who completely accepted that part of me, every part of me, um, and that's my story. It's about the people. I started Lee wanting to be a part of everything. My freshman year, I got involved with the theater program, EVS, Delta Zeta Tau, um, a job at the publications office. I got involved with small groups, and I attended almost every campus event, especially if there was free food. 
If you've ever seen an overactive chihuahua that needs to be squirted with a water bottle, that was me. I continued my involvement with DZT and the publications office through the rest of my college career. My deltas were my role models. Imagine 50 girls who are just as goofy as you are with a five-year-old sense of humor, but with the wisdom and the standard of a Proverbs 31 woman. They offer the accountability of family. By the way they lived their lives and the way they challenged me, they changed me. I have never been so blessed by a group of strong and faithful group of women. Um, now, very, people, very few people can say that they loved their college job. I really, really did. Um, because of it, I have the training and confidence to excel in a recently acquired job in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm moving out west, y'all. <laughs> the publication's office challenged me to accept the motto that nothing is impossible. I found a balance of discipline and fun in a job. More than that, my coworkers taught me humility and love. When I was at that low point that most college students will get to, where there's no groceries in the pantry and not a dime in the bank. Two of my coworkers were at my doorstep with a car full of groceries. No strings attached, just pure love. With all this being poured into me, I found a way to give back in being a gateway peer leader in my junior year. Like I had been warned, my students became my heart and supported, encouraged, and prayed with me as much as I tried to pour into them. One of my students actually became my little, little sister in DZT, someone who is irreplaceable in herself. I've had every opportunity at Lee to make lifelong memories. I've been able to travel overseas. I went to Egypt my freshman year, Ghana my senior year, and they both blew my mind. Um, when I went to Ghana, it was for student teaching. It was for seven weeks. And those people taught me so much more about depending on God solely, solely God. They taught me the simplicity that life really has to offer. Um, I plan on coming back. Those kids touched my life, and I plan on seeing them again someday. I learned you get what you put into Lee. You can grow and experience as much as you want. Shoot, I participated in the Parade of Favorites. It's a scholar-based beauty pageant, something I never thought that I would do. But throughout all these experiences, what made my time and what would be the hardest to leave is the people who I've come to care about and who have shown me how to have a deeper, stronger, and more real, real relationship with Christ. As much as you all deserve to be recognized, I don't think I have the time to call you each by name. But this is not the end. We'll stay in touch. I do have to recognize my three godsons during my time at Lee, Herschel and Virginia Collier, and Dr. Bill Cam. Thank you. You were my mentors, my Lee parents, and my guardian angels during my time at Lee. You refused to let me ever believe that I was just good or just adequate. I could be anything less than great. I'd also like to thank my family for being here tonight. You have no idea. It means the absolute world to me that y'all are here. I'm not sure where y'all are, but I appreciate it so much. And a last shout out to my little sister, Isabella, and my little brother, Andrew. We will always be the Three Musketeers, I promise, no matter the distance. So thank you all so much.
I appreciate the opportunity to speak, considering that there were far more deserving classmates of mine that were a lot more deserving and more eloquent than me. But I do want to share my story. Uh, born and raised in South Louisiana, lived there for 50 plus years. I was a practicing attorney, uh, had a beautiful, have a beautiful wife of 33 years, <laughs> and she's here. And I had six wonderful kids. Uh, and it's amazing, I had four of my children actually came to Lee. And unfortunately, I'll be the first one to graduate. Uh, <laughs> there's a story. Uh, a lot of my money came here. Uh, but uh, two of my kids got homesick, and they came back to Louisiana and graduated college there. A third one met her husband here. Now she is a uh, minister's wife, a Church of God minister's wife in Virginia. But as my son Kyle, who is not here, that, that led me here to Lee. My son Kyle entered Lee in 2001, and he was excited as he could be. He was a communications major, and he filmed events like this. Uh, he filmed Chapel. He filmed uh, the coach's uh, TV show, and he loved it. He literally bled maroon and white. He just couldn't get enough of it. He did children's ministry over at Westmore. After his first year, he went on a mission trip through, the, uh, through Lee uh, Indian Reservation in Montana. He came home that first year uh, from the reservation and his calf was swollen. After going to a doctor, we found out that he had a cancerous tumor. Shortly, and I want you to know as I tell this story that we're truly blessed. I don't want anybody to feel the story. I said, oh, we're, we're, we're a truly blessed family. But after the cancer went in the tumor's leg, it quickly spread to his lungs. He was home for a year from Lee, three chest surgeries, radiation, chemotherapy. And then the doctor cleared him. He was cancer free and he came back to Lee. But it then, after a checkup, a few months later, we got that call you never want to hear inoperable cancer. So Kyle came back home, the tumor grew and grew, and listening to gospel music, we watched him die. Had a long talk with God about that, you know, why? And of course, I really won't find out until we get to heaven. But it made me realize how short life is. And you've heard it been said that when you get old and when you're on your deathbed, you don't regret what you did, but you regret what you didn't do. Practicing law was only an opportunity for me and my wife to do ministry. We did children's ministry. Practicing law just paid the bills. Uh, and I told God, I said, God, I can walk away from practicing law. You tell me when, you tell me where, and I'll walk away from it. And it sounds crazy, but my wife and I agreed on that. It was several years before we heard from God, and, and it was clear as day for both of us that God sent a clear sign it was time to move on. Within 30 days, I closed up my office, put it up for sale, and put our house for sale. Shortly thereafter, I was here at Lee. God had given me a new mission field in education, to be a teacher, to minister to kids in the schools. Uh, it, it's strange that I came here to Lee, literally bleeding LSU purple and gold, <laughs> but I'm gonna leave here bleeding Lee maroon and white. In closing, I just want to share a couple of things to those in the education department. I had the most wonderful teachers, staff, and classmates that anyone could ask for. Uh, my classmate treated me as an equal. My teachers were patient with me because, as I said last night, terminology has changed and technology has changed. And I thought about how could I describe my, my professors, the staff, my classmates. They were such great people. I love them tremendously. I have the greatest honor and respect. And I thought of the eloquent words of Dr. Riggins. And, and as I tell you this, I, I, I say this with a heartfelt thanks and honor and gratitude for them. So no matter whether you're from South Louisiana, Cleveland, Tennessee, or South Georgia, the administration, the teachers, the staff, and my classmates are just good people. Thank you.
Good evening, everyone. I just want to say thank you, Paul Kahn, for the opportunity to speak before you all. There's something about being given the opportunity to speak in front of a crowd of your peers about your league experience. It's exciting, but intimidating at the same time. It's hard to say no to such an opportunity, but at the same time, it's terrifying to think that you just might be that speaker who bores everyone to death, that person that everyone wishes would hurry up and finish. And when asked to speak about your Lee experience, where exactly do you begin? What do you talk about? And how do you explain all the events that have happened over the past four years? How do you combine all of that into one common theme that points towards something higher, something more significant? So I'm guessing to give you the best story, I have to start at the beginning. I came to Lee as a typical know-it-all freshman. I ran towards college with new perspective, ready to leave my high school years behind me, ready to make new friends, have new experiences, grow spiritually, and have the time of my life. What awaited me on campus was something that was totally unexpected, but what, yet exactly what I needed. Over the next four years, everything that I thought I knew about myself would change. Looking back, I'm so grateful for who God has created me to be in the past few years. Coming to Lee as a, a freshman pre-med major, I pretty much felt like I was the cream of the crop. The best of the best. I never struggled in classes in high school, and I knew if it, college was anything like that, this was going to be a breeze. And pretty much the first semester was. High school prepared me pretty well for college and the transition, so much so that my freshman year, I kind of felt like I was at a day camp for college kids. So my first semester, I enjoyed the late nights at Jasmine's Coffee Shop with my roommate, the hangouts on the Ped Mall with my friends, the occasional pranks we pulled on the hall below us in Nora Chambers, and all of the free food and free events. Then somewhere after first semester, the bottom fell out, and I was, found myself in a place that I've never been before. I was struggling in classes and no longer feeling confident or competent or feeling like I was even the best. I wasn't confident in my major and even considering changing my major altogether. Needless to say, that began one of the scariest times of my life. Not knowing what God had in store, I buckled down and kept pushing forward, praying that he would send the Calvary in soon. Fortunately, he did, but it wasn't until I switched my major three times and totally changed my career path from medical school to a master's in nursing. From then until now, I can look back and, and see how God was shaping me and molding me into the young adult he intended me to be. My pride and my arrogance had to be broken. Realizing that dropping my pride and actually asking for help was one of the greatest lessons that I learned as a student. It also allowed me to gain new relationships with professors that I never had before. Now, if you've ever sat by the math and science department, it can be pretty interesting. The science majors are a breed of their own, and the professors are, well, unique, to say the least. But, step, but me stepping out of my comfort zone and actually going to the professor's offices for help helped me to see them in a different manner. Professors like Dr. Jerry Veenstra, Joe Beth Boyer, Dr. Sherry Casper, and Dr. Paul De La Luz are some of the many professors that have influenced me to see science in a new light. Through classes and school trips, lab sessions and advising meetings. They all have been solid motivators when times were tough for me. Constant reminders of the goal of higher education, to be able to do what I love in the end. So moving forward, I know that the influences that they've had on my career and education path will be ones that I cherish forever. Now, everyone knows that being at Lee means getting involved in some way. Getting out of your dorm, meeting new people, creating new memories and experiences are what make your college years. Being involved over the past four years have been some of the greatest times for me. The girls that I had the privilege of living with freshman year on the third floor of Nora Chambers helped me to kind of get through my initial stages of homesickness and shyness. They convinced me to leave the dorm, experience campus, and occasionally break curfew to hang out with some of the coolest guys on Battle second floor. Now, this is not me saying that I support breaking curfew. It's absolutely wrong, but I'd have to say that there was one guy in particular that was definitely worth the curfew violation a million times over. <laughs> now hopefully he knows who he is 
And I hope that that small shout out was significant for him. But if not, hopefully this one catches his eye and it breaks his attention from that book that he snuck in under his regalia and is probably reading right now. I love you, honey, and you were totes worth the curfew violation. <laughs> that I didn't tell my parents about. <laughs> After the first few months at Lee, I was ready to try my hand at a club on campus. I had already joined small group in my dorm and was a floor leader for our weekly sessions. But I was interested in something to, a little bit more to be involved in. Joining Omega Alpha Phi in the spring of 2010 provided me with a family of girls that I didn't know I was looking for. I rushed in the spring of 2010 with no clue of what I was getting myself into. Literally no clue. Little did I know that the circle of friends that I would soon become family, my family, away from family. These girls will walk me through some of the happiest and lowest times of my life. The accountability and friendship that I share with my sisters has transcended time and space between us. And I know that though mouths may separate us, we will always be best of friends. The most unlikely experience that I love about my time at Lee has been working with the wonderful men and women in the A Force and Admissions Office. What began as a simple way for me to earn a little extra mo money has become a passion that I love to do. There's something about waking up bright and early in the morning and know that there's a hundred plus freshmen, potential freshmen here at Lee waiting for you on campus. Or at least you know that the cafe is gonna have really good food and the weather is gonna be perfect. Being a tour guide has been a constant reminder of why I love Lee. The excitement in the eyes of prospective students makes you fall in love with this place all over again. You remember why you chose Lee and it motivates you to be a part of campus that, always, that these kids want to come to love and appreciate as well. And yes, I do actually feel this way. Phil Cook is not paying me to say this to you. These past four years have been the time of my life, and if I had to think of one common theme that God has taught me during my time here, it's the teaching that Apostle Paul shows us in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. I'm not the know-it-all freshman who stepped foot on this campus four years, years ago. God has taken me from this baby of a Christian and taught me something that I couldn't have imagined that I would need to know or transform me into someone I thought I even needed to become. He's blessed me and it's been unparalleled and I'm grateful for the opportunity to grow and transform into who he's called me to be. Moving forward, I'm excited to see what he has in store. And I know that this little place in Cleveland, Tennessee will always be the place that I can look back and say, that's where God transformed me into who he, re who he really wanted me to be. Thank you, Lee University, for providing the atmosphere for him to do that. To God be the glory, and may he bless you all. Thank you. Good evening. First, I would like to extend my thanks to Dr. Khan and the Lee University Cabinet for the honor to speak at such a memorable occasion. I am humbled and excited about the opportunity to share my Lee University story. I must admit from the outset that it was not my original intention to come to Lee. Despite having both my parents as alumni and one sister in school at Lee, I was dead set on playing college football. However, the deeper I embedded myself in the recruiting process, the stronger I felt God directing me on a different path. The fact that I was five foot nine with an average arm and a 40 time that was above 4.5 seconds didn't help the matter either. So eventually I decided to follow God's call to Lee. That is, after my mom called at least once per week for two months straight to ensure that I would not be living in Medlin Hall. <laughs> Thank God for persistent mothers. For many freshmen in college, the chance at a brand new start is exhilarating. And although I felt this sentiment in a variety of ways, I would be lying if I didn't say that the idea of starting over was a bit overwhelming, considering the move away from long-standing friendships and the arrival at a place with so many gifted and anointed students. It wasn't until I became a member of Alpha Gamma Chi that my negative feelings were reversed. Caught in a community of Christian brothers where honesty and transparency were of the utmost importance, 
I felt loneliness and inadequacy give way to investment and passion. I experienced newfound relational depth, and I saw an avenue to utilize my gift setting for the entirety of my undergraduate years. Sophomore year, I decided to room with my best friend and residential assistant in Atkins Ellis Hall, despite knowing that nearly every floor mate would be a freshman. What started out as a concession turned into a blessing as I was able to see their maturation and join the journey of discipleship with them as a co-small group leader for the discipleship ministries at Lee. I can remember the nights where the commons area of the floor turned into either a place of worship or a wrestling arena. The guys really went crazy when I became a distinguished gentleman for about 40 incredible women known as the lovely ladies of Delta Zeta Tau. In the end, the extent to which I fulfilled my call in representing and investing in these women paled in comparison to the support and encouragement they gave me. Then in the summer going into my junior year, I committed the unforgivable sin according to the Greek community Bible, dating a girl in the Rivals Girl Club. <laughs> Miraculously, the grace of God was able to cover even this sin, for I stand here today still infatuated with the woman that I began dating that summer. The following fall, I was hired to work in the president's office, despite an episode of food poisoning during my trial run at the end of the previous semester. After calling for a trash can from a current student worker and to throw up at the exact same time Mrs. Khan walked in the office, I decided it was time to tell my immediate boss that I didn't feel well. <laughs> that boss became a mentor to me. And in that office, I learned what excellence really looks like. I learned that professionalism need not ever exclude hospitality, and I learned that common burdens are often shared at unexpected yet God-appointed times. During that same semester, I felt God leading me away from math education and toward biblical and theological studies. After switching, I found immediate fulfillment as I was led into the rich depths of Christian knowledge by my professors at Lee. From Dr. Ricky Moore, I learned that the Bible is taught best through story. From Dr. Skip Jenkins, I learned that the gospel is most beautiful when taught in the midst of personal brokenness. And from Dr. Lisa Stevenson, I learned that biblical equality is taught through every individual act of liberation. In these ways, I learned that true knowledge is fully realized at the intersection of the mind, heart, spirit, and will, at the core of one's essence and being. I will surely take these lessons with me as I enter further theological education at Vanderbilt Divinity School this fall. At the end of my junior year, I raised my thumb in favor of a motion that when passed would encompass the majority of my senior year investment. Culminating on April 4th through 6th of this past spring, after about nine months of planning and preparation, I played in a flag football game for 50 straight hours, a Guinness World Record, as the means to accomplish a fundraising total of around $62,000, which is helping to break the poverty cycle and end on Cambodia. Truly, I will never forget the final two hours of the marathon game, as everyone surrounded the Lee University soccer field and cheered on my brothers and me. But even more than that, I will remember going through Lee to Cambodia this summer and experiencing the embrace of three beautiful little girls stretching their arms out as far as they could out of what could hardly be considered a hut to grasp my hand. So when I think of my time at Lee, I think back to Kai, to DZT, to Atkins Ellis, to the President's Office, and to the School of Religion. Yet it is the relationships, experiences, and lessons lying behind all of these that comprise my Lee University experience. And in that way, my story continues on. Thank you. What a wonderful set of reflections. Thank you so much, all of you. It's our practice at this time, on the night before commencement, to give each graduating student a Bible. These Bibles are given not as souvenirs, and they're given knowing that you have probably had many Bibles but they're given to you as a final statement from all of us who have known you and worked with you here at Lee and who have come to believe in you. 
we want you to go out there and do great things. But we know that the only foundation of your life, which is solid enough, real enough, ultimately big enough to sustain you for a lifetime, is the Word of God. So we give you this Bible as a final way of saying that. For those of you who are graduate student, well, undergraduates, this is an NIV translation. And we, for those, give a separate translation for graduate students because we do have some who uh, have received a Bible earlier. I've inscribed each of these Bibles to you and your name is embossed on the front. We have them arranged in the exact precise order <laughs> that you're going to come across the stage. And these Bibles will be given to you by our campus pastor, Dr. Jimmy Harper, and our Dean of Students, Alan McClung. <clears throat> I've also inscribed a scripture reference on the fly leaf of this Bible for you. It's a familiar scripture. It's part of the prayer of the Apostle Paul found in the Ephesians. So after you've gotten back to your seats, I'm going to ask all of you to stand and let's read that scripture together before we dismiss this evening. God bless you as you come to receive your Bibles.
That buzz you hear, ladies and gentlemen, is graduates trying to find the right Bible. <laughs> I think I could tell when it broke down. How many of you got the right Bible? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. We will have a committee of inquiry. Someone on your right is responsible for that problem. <clears throat> Before we read the scripture together, let me just observe, if I may, what a pleasure to hear the kind of keyboard music we hear tonight with Phil Thomas just now on the piano and with Mary Beth Wicks on the organ. They do such a wonderful job. Thank you. If I could pick three verses out of scripture that would go most to the heart of what I would like you to remember as you leave here, it would be the prayer of the Apostle Paul in Ephesians 3, but particularly the part of that starting with the 16th verse. And I'd like for you to turn there, those of you who have the NIV, that's on page 974. Graduate students with the New Living Translation, it's on page 953. We'll read it in the NIV version. So I, I would like us to read this together. And as you leave this evening and tomorrow morning, if you forget everything else and remember this, you will land on your feet and God will find you at every step of your life and your life will be good. Let's read together. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Amen and may it be so in your lives. Would you stand please congregation? Let me remind you that you are invited to a reception science and math. in the science math complex. That's where the food is. That's where I'm headed. I'm the first one out the door. Now, this is a pretty heavy hors d'oeuvre. You know, the weenie bars, the little chicken legs, the uh, Swedish meatballs. Uh, charge will be $19.95 and it'll be a... <laughs> Just a little, you don't get anything free joke. All of you are welcome. We have plenty of, uh, plenty of food for all, so please join us for that occasion. Now bringing our benediction is Brian Elrod. Brian is from Maryville, Tennessee, and he is graduating in business administration. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for letting us gather here today to celebrate our achievements and reflect back on our time here at Lee. We pray that you receive all the glory and the honor for everything we have done, for it was done in your name and for the glory of your kingdom. We have faith, God, that you will continue to bless our past as we transition into new chapters of our lives and give us the strength, love, and wisdom to be successful in those endeavors we pursue. And let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen.